Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. Now, lately, I've noticed quite a few comments about how much better Far Cry 2 looks than more recent entries, and I thought this might make for an interesting comparison, considering it's now been a decade since that game released. That's right, Far Cry 2 released 10 years ago, and in my own opinion, it hasn't actually aged as well as some of the other games from that time. But, at the same time, it does feature some innovative design choices that are still impressive today. But the first thing that stood out to me when I initially booted up this game again was the odd color configuration that the game is set to by default. All the colors are washed out for aesthetic purposes, and it really doesn't fit with the other entries in the franchise. So for this video I am running a Sweet FX mod, which seems to bring out the color in the environment more, and bring it more in line with what you'd expect in a modern Far Cry game. So we can focus less on that drastic color difference, and more on the actual details and effects. And to start off our comparison, we're going to look at some texture comparisons. As expected, Far Cry 5's texture quality far surpasses anything in Far Cry 2. The bump mapping on things like the trees has significantly more complexity in 5, and even the ground textures have a slightly higher resolution. But I was surprised to see some pretty low quality texture work in Far Cry 5 on most of the rocks in the game world, something that doesn't stand out as bad in Far Cry 2 thanks to the simpler texture and object designs. Next, we'll take an in-depth look at several near-identical gun models. First, we have the classic 1911. There's not even a question here, the detail in Far Cry 5 far exceeds the outdated models in Far Cry 2. From the reflective quality on the surface of the slide, to the smaller details like bolts and creases. And then if you look at the character's hand model, it's even more apparent how much technology has advanced over the course of 10 years. The textures are nearly flat on the wrist in Far Cry 2, and the hand just looks like something you'd expect from an old video game. Far Cry 5 has significantly more depth and more detailed models, and better bump mapping on its texture work. When firing the weapon, we see low quality sprite work with the muzzle flashes in both games, something that you wouldn't really notice unless you slowed the gameplay down substantially. The firing animations feel very stiff and awkward in Far Cry 2, with a poor transition from the recoil position back to the resting idle position. Far Cry 5 smooths this out by making the animation flow smoothly back to the idle animation. These observations are about the same between all the weapon comparisons I have prepared, so I'm just going to let them play out and you guys can determine which one looks and sounds better. Okay, moving on from weapon comparisons, let's take a quick look at another model, the ATV. Far Cry 2 has a more simplistic model design, with less detail overall. Far Cry 5 has more elevated pieces that create a bit more depth and shadow complexity, and the shaders in general just look more advanced. Shadows are actually pretty good in both of these titles. Shadows appear relatively soft in Far Cry 2, and the swaying trees and multiple branches in most of the environmental foliage makes for a really cool effect. Far Cry 5 shadows build on this design with far more realistic looking shadow projections and enhanced complexity. Moving on, we have lighting effects. Like I said earlier, I installed a Sweet Effects mod in Far Cry 2 to help assist with the drab default lighting and shader effects. But even without them, the lighting in Far Cry 2 is still halfway decent, with some occasional god rays that pour through the trees in the early mornings or late evenings. But Far Cry 5 is a substantial step ahead in this department, with volumetric lighting effects, fog, bloom, lens flare effects, and various other nice touches that help sell a more realistic looking image. Next we have the effects comparisons, and this is where we start to see what a lot of the die-hard Far Cry 2 fans are talking about. Far Cry 2's attention to detail is probably one of the best in the series, with tiny little things that really help sell a more authentic experience. 
For one thing, the foliage in the game world reacts to the player's presence. Every bush I walk through in Far Cry 2 folds out of the way, with multiple layers of sprites to help sell the illusion. Far Cry 5 doesn't even bother with this at all though. Every bush in the game is static and will literally only react to vehicles smashing through them. Walking through the bushes has no effect. So what about dynamic destruction? Well, you can destroy objects in Far Cry 5, but in Far Cry 2, you could destroy individual branches on some of the larger vegetation. This ended up looking really cool when firing large machine guns or grenade launchers in dense jungle areas. But Far Cry 5's trees are once again static and barely react to anything. This extends to a few other small details in the world of Far Cry 2. The focus seemed to be more on selling an authentic open world, where everything you did had consequences. Your weapons would degrade after excessive use, sometimes jamming during combat. Getting shot would require you to actually brutally remove the bullets from your arms and legs, and the bullet penetration behaved as expected, with the player capable of shooting enemies through metal walls. So how about fire propagation and fire effects? Now, this one is kind of a mixed bag. When testing the flamethrower, the actual fire effect as it leaves the weapon looks much better in Far Cry 5. And lighting the grass on fire also looks a little bit better in 5 thanks to the smoke effects. But when I tried lighting a tree on fire, I ran into an interesting issue with the propagation in Far Cry 5. Fire would slowly creep up the trunk of a tree in 5 until finally reaching the top, and then a huge fireball would appear in the space above the tree. Now I tried this on a few trees, and it seemed to only look correct on one of the much larger trees, where the fireball was lower and surrounded the actual leaves. But even then, it didn't look nearly as good as the tree burning in Far Cry 2, where the leaves shrivel away and leave the tree entirely barren. Far Cry 5's trees just turn black but look identical otherwise. Explosions are pathetic in both titles, but more so in Far Cry 5. As I noted in my previous video, the grenade explosions feel like there's no impact at all. None of the nearby foliage reacts to the explosion, and the smoke disappears almost instantly. Far Cry 2 kicks up a bit of grass from the ground, which may look a bit dated now, but at least it does something to help sell the impact of a grenade explosion. C4 looks bad in both. Far Cry 2, the explosion looks like a series of identical sprites all randomly appearing on screen. In Far Cry 5, the fireball is small and isolated, and again, none of the objects nearby react to the explosion. For water, we have some surprisingly similar results, suggesting very little has been done to enhance this effect over the years using the Dunia engine. Yes, Far Cry 5 does look better, with improved shaders on the surface of the water, and some nice dynamic water simulation directly around the player. But underwater, both games appear similar, with murky water and a water surface that doesn't appear very realistically thanks to the lighting. And next, I wanted to extend these comparisons and start talking about artificial intelligence design. Far Cry 2's artificial intelligence was a pretty big deal back when it first was initially showcased, with enemies getting injured, crawling to cover, and asking for assistance from nearby soldiers. This feature is actually still implemented in Far Cry 5, albeit in a more simplistic state. Enemies can now enter a down state, and nearby hostiles will react based on proximity and help them get back up. It's not as complex as Far Cry 2 where enemies could be seen carrying their teammates to safety, but it still functions along the same parameters. As for the AI's reaction, it seems to be identical. Hostiles will react to sound effects believably, investigating explosions without immediately knowing where the player is hiding, and sniping from long distances will freak out the enemies in both games, but they often need to search the area to identify where the shots are coming from. Oddly enough, in Far Cry 2, enemies will begin hiding if they can't identify the source of the sniper, making me believe that an entire outpost was abandoned when in fact they were all hiding behind cover. In Far Cry 5, however, all the enemies slowly begin to surround the estimated position of the player, and will walk from cover to cover to the sniper's position. And those are just some of the interesting differences and similarities I was able to spot when comparing these two games. What surprised you guys the most? Let me know in the comments section, and if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe for more content posted every week.